Okay, we're gonna go ahead and finish these notes. So we have one problem left in the rate of work problem. And this is one of the types of problems that's written in a way that's just a little bit tricky. Um, and the way that these are written, um, they usually throw me off. So I wanted to give you guys some strategies um, for how you could think of this problem so that when you do it, it would make sense. Okay, so the problem says, Marco can build a laptop twice as fast as Cliff. So we have Marco and Cliff uh, working together. It takes them five hours. How long would it have taken Marco alone? So this is different than the two situations um, that we went over in the video because in the video, um, together was what we were always solving for. So whenever we did to the together portion, we always wrote just one over X, one over X for the together portion. Uh, that was the unknown. Here, together, we know it's five hours. So we know that they're gonna be able to do one fifth of the job in one hour working together. Um, that means that Marco and Cliff are both going to have variables defining them. And what I have found um, is true for students and is also true for me is that when they say things like Marco can build a laptop twice as fast as Cliff is that when they write this, I usually get the twice as fast part. I usually put the two with the wrong person. That's just me. So what I like to do is I like to give them fake numbers <laughs> um, and help me figure out how the variable should work and then I assign them variables. So for instance, I just think of a number. I think um, if Marco was somebody who had um, built a computer and I'm gonna pick a number that could be doubled or divided in half just so that I can do this well, let's say that Marco was able to build a computer in 20 hours. That's something that can be cut in half. It's also something that can be multiplied by two. So it says that Marco can build a laptop twice as fast as Cliff. He's faster than Cliff is. That means that if he did it in 20 hours, Cliff would have had to do it in 40 hours. And this is not saying these are the actual answers. This is just helping me figure out my variable. That means that here, Cliff is the one that's going to be double Marco's time. Even though it says Marco can build the laptop twice as fast, even though the two is kind of applying to Marco, uh, the two is going to go with the variable for Cliff. Uh, and that usually throws students off. So Marco is the one who has the unknown time, but he is twice as fast as Cliff. So if Marco's time is X, then Cliff's time is going to be double that because Marco is twice as fast. So I'm hoping that that reasoning kind of made sense to you guys. Um, if not, maybe rewind the video and go back and watch that explanation again. Okay, so now that we have uh, Marco can do the job in X period of time, Cliff can do the job in 2x period of time, that's you know twice as long as Marco, um, and we know they can do the job together in five hours, we can set up our equation as 1 over x plus 1 over 2x equals 1 over 5. And so if I look for my least common denominator, uh, between the 5 and the 2, I'm going to need 10, and then I have 1x over here, so I'm going to need 10x. So this entire equation is going to be multiplied by 10x. So I'm going to have 1 over x multiplied by 10x, and 1 over 2x multiplied by 10x and 1 over 5 multiplied by 10x. And so this is going to be 10, and this is going to be 5, and that's going to be 2x. So I have 15 equals 2x, 
and then I'll go ahead and divide by 2. So 7.5 equals x. So x would be Marco's time. So Marco's time for building a laptop would be 7.5 hours. And then if I didn't divide by 2, if I just said 2x, uh, Cliff's time would have been 15 hours. 2x equals 15. So Marco's time is 7.5 hours. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and turn to the other problems that we need to finish. So we have um, a plane flies uh, 910 miles with the wind. Um, at the same time, it can go 660 miles against the wind. Um, so going with the wind is the same as kind of like um, swimming with a current whereas um, the against the wind would be like going against the current. And so we're gonna say that if we were to compare this to the previous problems, um, we would say that downstream is kind of like with the wind. So you would do your speed in still air plus the wind. Um, upstream would be kind of like your speed in still air minus the wind. So that's, we're gonna kind of relate it to this. So against the wind, with the wind. So here we have the distance is 660 miles if you're against the wind. Um, the speed of the plane in still air is 305. So this is minus the wind. Uh, you can go 910 miles, this is 305 plus the wind, okay? So we know that distance is rate multiplied by time. That means that time is distance divided by rate. So distance divided by rate. Distance divided by rate. And since it said in the sentence um, that it can do this flight at the same time, that it can do it in the same amount of time, uh, that means that these two are equal to each other. So these two amounts of time are equal to each other. So we're going to say 660 over 305 minus W is the same as 910 over 305 plus W. And then whenever you have two fractions that equal each other, you can go ahead and cross multiply. So we're going to have 910 times 305 minus W equals 660 times 305 plus W. And we can go ahead and distribute. Two hundred seventy seven thousand five hundred fifty two hundred one thousand three hundred Okay, and then I'm going to get my W's to one side. And that's one thousand five hundred seventy W's. I'm going to go ahead and subtract this number over. Seventy six thousand two hundred fifty equals one thousand five hundred seventy W. 
and then I'll go ahead and divide so I can solve for W. I get 48.567. So about 49 miles per hour approximately. Um, I wrote down three decimal places for the sake of mathematical accuracy. You know, it's good to kind of show mathematically I was able to calculate this. Uh, in the context of the word problem, I probably wouldn't have been able to do that in a real life situation, actually have that level of accuracy with the problem. So I went ahead and rounded my answer as far as the context of the problem. Okay, let's look at one more example like that. So we're back to a water problem. So we have a person swimming um, 11 miles downriver. Um, at the same time, they can swim seven miles upriver. So you can see the downriver is the part where the current would be added. That'd be helping them. Seven miles upriver, that's where the current is working against them. The speed of the current is four miles per hour. So the distance for upriver, I wrote upstream, but upriver, downriver, uh, seven and 11. Um, here we had the current was working against them, so minus four. Here the current was helping them, so plus four. Um, distance equals rate times time multiplied by time. So time is distance divided by rate. So distance divided by rate. Distance divided by rate. It says that these two things um, happen in the same time frame, and so not that they happened at the same time, but that they would happen in the same amount of time. So I'm going to set them equal to each other. And then to solve, I'm going to go ahead and cross multiply. So 7x plus 28 equals 11x minus 44. And I can get my x's to one side. 4x minus 44. Uh, I can keep my x's right here and move my numbers to the other side. Seventy-two, so seventy-two equals four x. So x equals eighteen, and remember x was what we used for the still water. Find the speed of the person in still water. That would be eighteen uh, miles per hour is the units for the problem.